This video is called More Fun with Push-Pull, and it's the 8 video for Chapter 4 in Google SketchUp for Dummies. Okay, as in every other video, we're going to start out by deleting Bryce. Sorry, Bryce. And what I'm going to do in this video is show you some other ways that you can use Push-Pull, um, the tool that is, to extrude some faces. And uh, the idea here is that Push-Pull is a really versatile tool that lots of people don't find out about the other things it can do, and that's kind of a shame. What I'm going to do is draw a rectangle, and then I'm just going to use the Line tool, and finding these midpoints, I'm going to subdivide this rectangle into a bunch of other smaller but equal rectangles. Okay, so that's just kind of a nice little hint. If you want to subdivide a big shape like this, you can use midpoints to subdivide it really quickly with the line tool. All right, let's get the push-pull tool. And what I'm going to do is push-pull this up to about, I don't know, that height. Now, what if I wanted to bring these up to exactly the same height as that? Well, what I do in SketchUp is I just double-click. Click, click. Click, click. Click, click. And watch what happens if I keep doing that. Click, 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 and click, click. Now what I've got is a little set of, I guess, quasi stairs, and they're all exactly the same riser height because all I did was extrude one and then double click to extrude all the others by the same height. Okay, neat thing. Let's go select all and hit the delete key on the keyboard to get rid of that. Let's now talk about making copies with the push-pull tool. All right, so what I did is I drew a rectangle. Now I'm going to get the push-pull tool again, and I'm just going to push-pull this up into a box. Now, with my left hand off the keyboard, I'm not modifying anything right now. Watch what happens if I just use push-pull. What I'm doing is basically just stretching and shrinking, in some cases, this, this um, shape that I have by just kind of pulling and pushing on its faces. But watch what happens if I hit the control key or the Option key on a Mac. Notice how I get the little plus sign next to the cursor? Watch, I'm going to hit Option again to make the plus sign go away. Okay, so with plus sign, with no plus sign. With that plus sign, when I click on a face, I'm going to end up making a copy of that face instead of uh, just stretching the shape out with the push-pull tool. So let's try that again, watch. Hit Option on the Mac or Control on the PC and click on this and I'm going to end up creating another little face right out there. So, kind of a neat way to um, to use push-pull, and something that we actually just introduced a couple of versions ago. Okay, I want to get rid of this. The way that I did that before was I went to the Edit menu and it said Select All, but notice there's a keyboard shortcut for that. Uh, it's Apple A or Command A on the Mac. It's Control A on the, on the PC. So, if I just hit that keyboard shortcut and then hit Delete, then I can select and then delete everything in my model. All right, third thing. Uh, in the book, it says, while push-pulling, hover over the other parts of your geometry to tell SketchUp how far to extrude. I wrote it, but apparently I can't read it. Okay, there's a rectangle. Here is a circle. Let's say that I were push-pulling these two things, and for some reason I want to create a cylinder that's exactly the same height as this rectangle. Well, let's actually kind of do a few things here so that the first thing I showed you won't work. Remember, the first thing I showed you was if I uh, do a push-pull and then I want to repeat that push-pull on another object, I just double-click. But in this case, if I do that, it's only going to bring it up as far as the last thing that I push-pulled. So here, I push-pull in that way, and then I double-click on this. It push-pulled this up the same distance that I push-pulled this in. So I hope that makes sense. What I want to do, though, is I want to push pull this up so it's exactly the same height as this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use SketchUp's inference system to do that. So watch. I'm going to click on the face that I want to push pull, just like this. So I've got it selected now and it's push pulling for me. And now I'm just going to hover over the thing that I want it to be the same height as. It's as simple as that. So watch. As I kind of hover over here, it's kind of skipping around. Watch that cylinder. It's kind of doing crazy things. But when I hover over the face, it kind of locks its height and all of a sudden it's exactly the same height as that box. Now here's the thing. As soon as I move away, it kind of goes crazy again. So what I need to do is I need to click here on that face to finish that push-pull operation. So the key to using push-pull in this way is to click once on the face, hover over the thing that you want to match the height or depth or distance of, and then click on that thing so that those heights are actually the same. Okay. Let's select everything and delete it. And the last thing I want to talk about in this video is push pulling a face into another coplanar face. Um, and this is kind of the fun part of SketchUp. So what I'll do is I'll draw a little rectangular wall. I'm going to go up and get the push pull tool and just pull this up. Now, 
I'm just going to take a rectangle. I used a keyboard shortcut there to select my rectangle tool. Instead of going up to the toolbar and, and hitting the rectangle icon, I just hit R for rectangle, and that let me do a rectangle. So watch, I'm going to hit L to give me the line tool, or E to give me the eraser, or P to give me the push-pull tool. Uh, in this case, I hit R to give me rectangle, and that's how I can actually use the rectangle tool without going up and changing tools. Okay, let's go and get the push-pull tool now. Push-pull in SketchUp by default is P. There we go. And now, if I grab this thing, this face here, and start push-pulling it, watch what happens when I push-pull it as far as I can back. It's going to hit the face on the other side of the shape, and when I click on that, that face goes together all goes away altogether, meaning I am end up with basically a hole in my surfaces. Let's try the same thing over here. I'm going to click here, and I'm going to push pull it back as far as it'll go. And you'll see that it's as far as it'll go because you get that what's called Z fighting effect. It kind of flashes between purple and beige or whatever your two default colors are, and that's telling you that you've got one surface in the same plane as the other surface. And you might even get that little on face inference tip. When that happens, you're just going to click and that'll actually make that face go away too. Okay, So that's basically how you push one face into another face to make that face disappear. Um, if you're wondering what this thing looks like, I'm going to hit spacebar to select the select to, uh, tool. When I click on the top face and hit delete, you'll see what actually happened on the inside there. So all it did was uh, push pull pushed this face back, but it also created these other faces on the side automatically. And that's just the way that, that SketchUp was designed. It was kind of a quick, easy way to create penetrations and surfaces, things like um, doors and windows, things like that. Okay, that is the end of the eighth video in Chapter 4 for SketchUp for Dummies.